homesickness could be very powerful. I can't take credit that I knew what to do. Uh, it was just by dumb luck that my homesickness found a way to creatively voice out these struggles. But if I'm able to share my experience with the outside world, to encourage people that are undergoing some of that right now and helping them channel that energy into a creative outlet, it could be extremely, extremely uh, fulfilling, cathartic uh, way of expression. The exhibition we're uh, showing here uh, at Fabrica as part of the uh, Brighton Festival is titled uh, Journeys from uh, an Absent Present to uh, a Lost Past. And uh, it's a notion that not only me and my family and Syrians uh, grapple with, a lot of migrants, a lot of forced migrants, a lot of refugees from all over the world uh, are grappling with the notion of limbo you know you're you're in limbo you've uh longed to this home state that is no longer existent and uh, you're trying to establish life uh, in a new uh, context the aftermath of course is that no matter how successful uh, migrants are economically there's always that emotional longing to home and that's where the absent present is you're kind of hovering between two worlds. I basically grew up for uh, 15 years in Saudi Arabia, where my dad used to work as a physician. Although we we're originally from Damascus, I haven't really discovered uh, my roots until we fully moved back in 1999. I quickly got enamored and infatuated with Damascus the oldest continuously inhabited city in the world. A city so rich that you walk around and you see minarets right next to churches, right next to synagogues, all sort of things, biblical architecture, Roman, Greek, Islamic, and it's all happening in one place with merchants, pigeons, kids laughing, playing around, car horns, everything. And that background was short-lived because I only lived it for about three and a half, four years. And I got yanked to the United States where I went to study my architectural degrees. Post 9-11, there was a travel ban in place that did not allow me to go back home for eight years. We're talking about an era that's well before the Arab Spring, well before the Syrian war. Uh, the result of that was heavy nostalgia and homesickness to home. So, as a uh, trained architect, I took to model making techniques. And that's how this whole artistic exploration and career now uh, started. So, the first bit of artwork is a series of uh, five pieces that are in uh, more of a French Victorian frame. And they're a bit of snippets of my romantic memories. They're not exact places. But part of my process is that I start looking at a lot of photographs and a lot of images from back home and, and photos that people have given me. And I just kind of sketch on the spot, three-dimensionally, what these feelings are. And then you see the, the kind of nostalgic uh, feeling, and that's the therapy that takes place in my studio. This is one of my favorite pieces. So oftentimes, I would start with the object and I would design the whole piece around it. So with this one, I came across this lovely uh, C-class uh, Mercedes and then it becomes about green. So you go finding found objects that are uh, greenish side and that's a, a nice game in itself as well because you got to imagine in my bins of found objects in the studio, there's no way I remember what's in there. So that process of finding a piece that would fit properly is really, really uh, fun to do. And so you can see here some of the found objects that I've utilized, like an earring over here, um, Christmas ornaments, tart molds, and your eye just really dives 
and reads the objects properly because if the scale is right, then the eye is going to see a chandelier, won't see an earring. Um, and that's, that's the fun part. Moving uh, from that, uh, on the other side here is more of the aftermath of wars, uh, aftermath of exile, jumbled architecture and picture frames, you know, what happens in the diaspora when you kind of look at that mirror and you, all you see is like that emotional baggage keep yelling at you. And then on the right hand side here we have the dining room set up with the graffiti and the life that has just abruptly come to a stop. And then coming back to on the other side, you have Tower of Dreams that is so beautifully made with intricate mosaics from Damascus. And it's the beauty that lures people into my work most of the time. But then there's a aha moment where you kind of realize, wait a second, that looks like an RPG weapon <laughs> that's shooting off people's lives and memories into an abyss. You start noticing the refugee boats, you start noticing the rubble, and the whole piece is hovering in space in a way that makes the viewer a little bit tense, and that's quite intentional, because it's meant to replicate that limbo that I was talking about. You know, your life is so fragile, it's, it's, it's hovering, it's shaking, it's almost coming down, crumbling to the floor and being broken to a million pieces. For the uh, portal of Fabrica, the big window, uh, I've chosen to do a special uh, installation with life jackets. As we all know, for, you know in, during the height of the refugee crisis, that's how people made their way uh, to Europe. And the fluorescent orange color of these life jackets became kind of the color of this exhibition. And it's a way to kind of grab people's attention. And I do that quite often in my exhibits. I like to be sneaky. <laughs> I like to sneak up on people. Uh, because, you know, that's how crises uh, happen in our lives. They sneak up on us. Life was going on. People were happy. People had established lives. People had successful lives until they had to move on and find a new beginning. The reception this artwork have received in the last uh, years really had caught me by surprise. And it highlighted how powerful art could be to me and to do work like this all over the world and try to exhibit this work in different places because I've learned through exhibiting this body of work that art has a way to humanize and build bridges between different backgrounds and different people. And we are living in a very xenophobic, divided times, undoubtedly. And with this way of expression, with, with this exhibit, I'm able to ever so gently uh, touch on these touchy issues without my audience feeling really that they've been lectured. It just gently approaches these thorny issues from a different perspective. Art has an ability to move somebody and puts it in someone else's shoes without them quite noticing that. And that what really excites me about showing this work all over the world. <laughs>